For many years, the Canary Islands were not a destination on our bucket list. The main associations we had with this place were all-inclusive hotels, parties and retired couples from Germany and the UK. Surprisingly, it turned out that Canary Islands have so much more to offer. In addition, we went to Gran Canaria in the middle of the pandemic. As we later found out, it was actually a big advantage. There were almost no tourists and we had the whole island to ourselves. When it comes to all-inclusive hotels, it is not the vibe that we like. This can be found mainly in the south of the island, so we decided to stay in the eastern part and we have also spent the last four days in Las Palmas, in the north. In the south of Gran Canaria, the weather is usually better, but bear in mind that south is the more touristy part of the island and all the largest resorts and all-inclusive hotels are located there. Also, most of the restaurants are not very authentic. In the north, on the other hand, it's a bit cooler and less sunny, but in our opinion it was not problematic at all. It was still very warm and pleasant. So it all depends on what you expect from your trip. If you want to relax on the beach, the south of the island will be a good choice. There you will find nice beaches with golden sand and small waves. In the north you can mostly find black volcanic beaches with big waves which are a paradise for surfers. Plus maybe a slightly more authentic experience, more to see, less all-inclusive resorts and more restaurants with authentic Spanish cuisine. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we are in Canary Islands, more precisely in Gran Canaria. And today we are planning a trip to the south of the island to see the beautiful harbour town called Puerto de Mogán. And then we are going to visit the biggest cactus park in Europe. Today it's a bit cold and windy where we are staying. That's why we decided to go to the south of the island because in the south of the island it's always a bit warmer and it's much more sun. While in the north it's like more cloudy, rainy and it's always a few degrees cooler. Just before we go, we will quickly show you our Airbnb that we found for a really great price, which was only 59 euro per night. The apartment was large, it had a well-equipped kitchen, small terrace and a swimming pool, which honestly we didn't use too much because every day we are actively exploring the island, what you will see in our vlog in a moment. Aldera Park is an absolute must-see in Gran Canaria. It is the largest cactus park in Europe. Believe me, it is the best 6 euro ever spent. The park is huge and beautiful and thanks to the pandemic we were lucky to be there on our own for 2 hours. It was a great experience for us, but I can imagine how difficult it is for them right now. Whenever you have an opportunity, come here and support this beautiful place. For comparison, we also visited the more popular Canarian Botanical Garden. It's for free and it's more accessible because it's located not too far from Las Palmas, but we like Cactual de Park much more. Puerto de Magán is a picturesque harbour town in the southwestern part of the island. It is known for its colourful houses and beautiful flowers decorating the streets. The atmosphere there is very calm, lazy and it's worth spending at least a few hours in this beautiful place. After visiting Puerto de Magán and Cacto Aldera Park, we went to Puerto de las Nieves, which is a tiny fishing village located on the northwest coast of the island. Here you will find characteristic white and blue buildings and a pebble beach with amazing views of the cliffs. The town is very peaceful, quiet and not too many tourists are coming there. While in Gran Canaria you can't miss the sunset or a sunrise at Mas Palomas Dunes, which are one of Gran Canaria's most popular attractions. It's a huge national park that stretches as much as 6 kilometers along the ocean. This desert area covers 4 million square meters and the highest dunes reach up to 20 meters. Visiting this place is definitely an extraordinary experience.
we've spent our last four days in Las Palmas, which surprised us quite a lot. It turned out that there is now a single city center with an old town where tourists usually go, instead there are two main parts of it. We stopped in the one of them, which is the historic district of Vegueta, where you will find, among others, Catedral de Santa Ana, the Columbus House and the Canarian Museum, but also a lot of nice restaurants, beautiful architecture and a shopping street. You can get to the second city center by the seaside promenade. Keep in mind that there is a longer walk, around 5 kilometers. A nice option is to rent city bike, as we did on the way back. This part of Las Palmas seems even a bit more touristy. Here you will also find a lot of restaurants, but probably the biggest attraction is the popular Las Canteras beach. It's usually very crowded, but a big advantage is the fact that there are no big waves, so it's quite safe comparing to the other beaches on the island. The other popular spot in the district is the main port of Las Palmas. While in Gran Canaria you can't miss a road trip to Pico de las Nieves. It is the highest peak of Gran Canaria, located at an altitude of almost 2000 meters, so make sure to take some warmer clothes, because during our trip the temperature dropped from 30 to 10 degrees Celsius, and at the top it was also very windy. The views are beautiful, and at the end of the route, already near Pico de las Nieves, we were surprised by coniferous forests, which we didn't expect in Gran Canaria but calling Gran Canaria the miniature continent didn't come out of nowhere. There are several routes to Pico de las Nieves, including those from Maspalomas or Telde, but we would recommend the most beautiful road, which is the GC65. You will pass all kinds of landscapes, the mountains, canyons, palm trees and charming towns. Make sure to take a short walk to Santa Lucia de Tirajana, La Sorrueda and San Bartolomé de Tirajana. Another day we visited Terror, which is a charming town in the mountains. It's good to take some warmer clothes with you, as it may be a few degrees cooler than in the rest of the island located directly by the ocean. We really like the architecture of Terror and characteristic wooden balconies, but also the location between green hills. The route from Las Palmas itself was also very picturesque. The town has great religious importance and the most popular point is the church at the main square. Caleta de Arriba is a tiny village on the cliff. It is probably not a popular place, especially among tourists, but as soon as you are nearby, it is worth stopping by. It kind of reminds me of the Italian Cinque Terre, however here all the buildings are white. After all, the town is very charming and there is a really nice view of the tiny beach from the cliff. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright the most beautiful beaches with golden sand can be found in the south of the island, near Mas Palomas or Puerto Rico de Gran Canaria. For example, Playa de Amadores, Playa del Ingles or a beach with white sand, Playa Anfidel Mar. In the eastern part of the island you will mostly find volcanic beaches with black sand and large waves that are visited by many surfers. Before I sleep, hear the crickets, see the moon. Food in the Canary Islands didn't blow us away. We've been to Spain many times before and in Barcelona, Madrid, Sevilla or even Mallorca, usually our food experience was much better. 
in Gran Canaria, many restaurants over-engineered the food and to be honest, it wasn't very tasty. We visited more than 20 restaurants and sadly we can recommend only 4 out of them. We will link them down below. While in the Canary Islands you have to try two things. First one is a layered coffee called Baraquito with condensed milk, espresso liquor 43, milk foam cinnamon lemon zest. Another one would be Papas Arugadas, a traditional dish of boiled potatoes served with mojo rojo and mojo verde sauce. If you have any questions regarding traveling during pandemic, we are happy to answer them in the comments below or on Instagram. Don't forget to hit subscribe and if you liked our video, please give us a thumbs up. Our next vlog from Crete is coming soon.